Hi, this is Sandeep P. Pednekar over here from Smart Vision Education and Training. Today, we are going to speak regarding selling models. Before we jump to the selling models, let's see what is a sales methodology. Yes, you have predicted in the right way. Why is a sales methodology required? First of all, we should understand what needs to be done, how to do it, your goals, actionable and measurable steps. So if you have to look at it, the first thing comes is prospect. When you get the prospect, you have to design an approach. After that, interviewing, your interview with the customer, to be customer, to be very frank. Then comes proposal, demonstration, negotiation, and last but not the least is support. Because after you sell your product, support is very, very important. Now, let's deep dive and look at the top selling models. The first one is called as the challenger sales. Author Matthew Dixon devised this. According to him, there are five categories of sales representative. Here, you teach, tailor, and take. That's the tactic. The five sales representative which we are speaking of are the first one is the hard worker. He does not give up easily. Self-motivated. is interested in feedback and personal development. The second is the lone wolf. He follows only his instinct. He's self-assured. He's self-assured. He delivers the result but it is difficult to manage. Next is the relationship builder. Classic consultative representative. He builds advocates internally, creates relationship with the prospects. Next is the problem solver, highly detail oriented, reliable, responds to the stakeholders. He ensures all the problems are solved. And last but not the least, the challenger. There's a different view of the world. He loves to debate, pushes the customers. He has a strong understanding of the customer's business. That's called as the challenger sale. The second selling model, conceptual selling. You have to ask questions to confirm the situation. Get new information. Ask questions by which you can get the new information. To check the attitude of the sponsor towards the project, whether really he is a sponsor or he just he is just gathering the information. But still. There you see a spark to get the sales. Commitment for investment. That is very, very important. Because if you are selling something and if you don't have the commitment for investment, it's of no use selling. Roadblocks. You have to understand from the stakeholders what are the various roadblocks which come in implementing the project. And all this has been devised by Miller and Hammond. It's a conceptual selling. The key element series and it's about the face-to-face -face selling system that works for the world's top companies to produce immediate important and reliable sales increase. Third is consultative selling. You, you have to be a consultant. So when you be a consultant you do a lot of research. Learn more about the prospective business including the competition and the growth rate. You have to ask open-ended questions. Open-ended questions to better understand the goals, needs and the challenges. Listen, pay attention, pay attention to the tone and be an active listener guiding the conversation. 80-20 rule, speak less and listen more. Teach, show how your product or service can solve the leads business challenges. That is very, very important. Here you can gain confidence. Quality. Determine whether your lead is qualified based on the information you have gathered. That's very, very important. Otherwise, sometimes it can be a no-go as well. Close. Now the prospect has built a relationship with you and here he should feel motivated to buy. Now, let's talk a bit about outbound and inbound selling. When I talk of these sellings, they are actually marketing techniques. When I say outbound marketing, it's marketer driven 
and it's a push marketing strategy. Here you broadcast and print advertising. There's a social media advertising also involved. Search engine advertising, emails to purchase list and display advertising. Now, when we talk of inbound marketing, that's a pull marketing. It's consumer driven. Actually, the consumer wants it and that's why we sell it. For example, you do a lot of blogging on social media, search engine optimization, emails to opt in the list and pay per click. Medpick, M-E-D-D-P-I-C-C, -C. one of the best models used ever. Yo, when I say M, it comes to matrix, a quantifiable justification of the economic impact. That give, gives you an understanding as to what is economical for the customer. Economic buyer, someone who can approve and move the budget. You have to understand your buyer very well. Decision criteria. What are the technical requirements? What are the business requirements? Once you understand that, it's very easy to sell your product or your services. Decision process. Who are the stakeholders, the influencers, and the approvers? Very, very important to understand these people. Paper process. What documentation is needed to book the order? And how long do these processes take? It can be a sales order, a purchase order, a contract, a master service agreement, a statement of work, etc. Identified pains. It is very important to understand how acute is that pain. What is driving the prospect to change? And there it can be a selling preposition. Champion. Now, when you want to sell something, when you want to influence something, you should have a subject matter expert. He should be a champion. He should be able to answer most of the questions which the customer asks. So someone who has the power, who has the influence and something to gain by the deployment, he has to understand all these things very well. Last but not least, competition. Who are you competing against? It is often times business as usual. But if you understand your competition very well, you will be able to do justice and win the project or the services for which you are bidding. The next is need selling. It's a model where N stands for need. Now, here you have to understand the surface. Well. Now, the, the customer might have had several key launches slip this year due to the miscommunication or data silos across departments and the team. Now, for this, they need increased collaboration. Now, the core pain will be these several key launches which slip resulted in loss of leads, contributing to the sales team not hitting the target for the quarter. So, what is the economic impact? Increased collaboration will result in better communication across all teams and departments. So, this is a positive economic impact which you'll get and the value of the impact will be because of the increased collaboration, it will allow key launches to be executed on time. This will increase the lead generation, allowing the sales team to hit their quarterly targets. Access to the authority. Yo, you have to understand what is the relationship, the reportings. Now it can be a healthy relationship, it can be a strained relationship also and a neutral relationship also. When you when you mean and when I say reporting, which means it can be a direct reporting or an indirect reporting or a non-reporting pattern in the relationship. Now, last but not least, we have to look at the timelines. So you have to have a timeline for each and everything, for the discovery call, for the product demo, for on-site being with the authority, for negotiations and also for signing. Now, let's look at the snap selling model. Keep it simple. Make things easy and clear for your customer. Be invaluable. Stand out by being the person your customer can't live without. He should be always thinking of calling you first whenever there is a problem. Always align. Make sure you are in sync with your customer's objectives, issues and needs. Raising priorities. 
keep the most important decisions at the forefront of their mind that's very very important the model spin selling is all about understanding the situation of the customer understanding what are its problems understanding the implications of those problems and then how can you pay it off make the prospect see the benefits that you are offering in your own words make sure to spend time asking these questions as they establish your product as the solution so this is spin selling last but not the least is the sandler's selling system now here first let's look at the discovery process discovery process is both for both the parties it's about bonding and rapport building upfront contracts it happens a number of times pain areas understanding the pain areas budgeting decision making fulfillment of the project and post sale support so this is the entire discovery process which is followed by both the parties there are several ways you know which are described in sandler's selling system one is called as a pattern interrupt here the sales representative takes controls of the sales calls by interrupting the customer for example he might ask a question how are you doing sir next is lie still and lie hide this is normally used by the buyer to get unpaid consultancy sometimes you know the buyer or the customer he needs information so he will ask you he lie steal the information and he hide from you next is softening statements sales representative at times should use several softening statements for example that's a very interesting question or i am glad that you asked me that next is reversing what is reversing it is ask answering your prospect's question with a question so in this way you uncover what are their pain areas negative reversing the sales representative always agrees with the prospects or sometimes he continues to ask to elaborate more on the needs of the customers strip lining presenting your product or your services in exactly the opposite way to what the prospect wants in this way you come to know what actually he wants rules of 3 plus this rule says that it takes three or more questions or reverses to get to the core or the emotional nature of the plan which the customer is facing magical filter people use magical filters as they hear or see what you say so you have to be very very careful regarding this dummy curve this dummy curve is for the sales representative initially when he is a fresher it's a dummy phase next is the amateur phase as he learns he is not that competent but he is not incompetent also last but not the least the final stage is the professional phase where he can go out and get business for the organization another technique is thermometer close now here the prospect shows interest in a scale of 0 to 10 0 means he is not interested at all and 10 means he have already decided from whom to buy monkey spot monkey spot is like you know you want a bigger chunk of sales for that you just do a small poc a proof of concept in a hope that you will get a bigger bigger chunk of sales no mystification it should be from both the sides that is no confusing each other and finally pac pac is called as protection against commission now even if the sales person walks away with small amount of commission in his pocket still the sales should be done we are in the digitized world so let's see what sales digitization is all about sales digitization we are in a digitized world so here there are several things 
which can be used, which can be taken into consideration as well. Macroeconomic factors, how the distribution is going to happen, seasonability, pricing, promotions and coupons, sponsorship, TV, radio, print outdoor, digital media and social media. In this digitized world, where the world has gone digital, so the strategies to have and these digitization technologies, strategies can be utilized to bring in more sales. Thank you for watching this. This is Sandeep V. over here from Smart Vision Education and Training.